get this party started. Welcome to the TV Hole Dojo, Dojo, Dojo. My name is Spicer, you spicy, and if you will, and today on the stream, we're gonna be doing critiques. We're gonna be working on our NFT. Full action packed stream today, and you better not miss it. You better stick here. You better like the video. You better subscribe. You better comment down below. But before we get started, kicking ass, taking names, and turning on autosave, let us give thanks and praise to the lords and gods of CGI. Starting with Frank Frazetta. Thank you, Lord Frank Frazetta. Next, St. Joseph of the Christ. Next, St. Paul. Look up here, look up here, look up here, look up here. Good boy. Next, Ryan, King of Slian. And finally, Simon Lee, Spider of the Thank you for your education, your inspiration, and your over all bad assness a dojo salutes you Woo! Woo! how is this how is a dojo doing how are you doing dojo warriors how are you doing today i hope you had a wonderful 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 weekend we're gonna be kicking ass today i'm gonna let you know that right now i'm gonna let you know that right now Kicking ass all day. All right, let me uh, move this over to the side. Sorry, I just opened up chat, so let me read over here. Well, uh, Ten of Slug, thank you very much. Appreciate you. Uh, terrible picture. Oh, what the f? Okay, well that's cool. That's your opinion. Congratulations. You're offended for no reason. Alrighty, so we are going to get into some critiques, and uh, we're going to start off with uh, ZGMG92 sent in his uh, female um, uh, anatomy study, and we are going to take a look at that. Um, bum, 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 bum. Uh, let's drag this out. Alrighty, so where are we in the stream? Let's move over to the dojo! <laughs> yeah! What is going on? What is going on? Thank you, everybody, for being here. You know, I always appreciate you. If you have any questions, uh, please do let me know. Um, you know, I focus on anatomy. If this is your first time here, I focus on anatomy teaching anatomy over at the XMD Academy. If you want your work to be critiqued by me on this stream tonight in just a few minutes, please join the ZBHO Dojo. It's in the Discord. It is totally free. Enjoy, enjoy. If you want your work uh, critiqued, go to Critique Submissions and put your ZTL in here, all right? So, um, and ankles are allowed. I don't know, can someone post something with ankles? Asking for, I guess so. I don't know if that's code for all you youngsters. Is that code for something? Is that is that something I'm missing out on? Is that something I should not be saying as often? I don't know. I don't know. Alrighty. So, uh, DGMG sent this in. We are going to take a look at it. Um, if you weren't here last uh, time, I uh, this okay. Ah, what is going on, brother? Appreciate you being here, brother, 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 brother. All right. So, um, if you weren't here last time, I suggested that he put a skeleton 
into his model so that he can get better proportions and a better rib cage. So he asked me to take a look at it again. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to put this where it should be. I know it looks a little weird and stuff like that, but uh, this skeleton knows more about anatomy than you do. Oh damn, are we hitting it off early? On the next episode of Janet and Ricky. No, no, we're gonna we're, we're gonna wait till that song comes out. We're gonna wait. All right, I got, I'm, I'm in the flow of the stream. We'll get it in just a second. All right. In fact, just so it doesn't tease everybody, we're just gonna skip the song, but we'll come back. Uh, Pixel Doctor Dasuki, hey, how's it going? It's going very well for me, brother. Can I have? I have zero complaints. Zero complaints today. All right, zero complaints. So uh, here we're gonna get this uh, a little bit more around the hips. Um, we're not going to consider this a shoulder. We're just gonna consider this a shoulder girdle. Um, and um, so you need to lower your rib cage a bit more. So you see whenever I turn it over to the side, there's a bunch of space here. So you wanna minimize this as much as possible without going through the uh the mesh okay now the difference between a male skeleton and a female skeleton is uh one uh you know we have the same amount of ribs so um unfortunately you know the bible has nothing to do with um uh how many ribs one or the other has we have the same amount of ribs but the thoracic arch which is right here at the end of the xiphoid process is um uh is where the one of the differences is so females have a 60 degree um uh opening in their thoracic arch coming from the end of the sternum and males have a 90 degree right so not all not all but most right um do so uh you can play with that anywhere on the high end of like 90 to 90 to 80 right and then for females around 60 to i would keep it around 60 to 65 somewhere around there but you can have that type of variance in the uh, overall um arch from the xiphoid process so that's this little jaunt that is coming off of the sternum okay so um here we're gonna bring this down so we show more of the rib cage um because generally a, um, a body style like this is not going to um, have, um, you know, a solid column of muscle right there, right? Um, because it seems like more of like an idealistic um, version of a uh, female. So we're just gonna go on that route, okay? So this is the biggest problem that you have with your mesh is that your rectus femoris or that that V-shaped muscle that goes straight down your leg, right? So your upper leg up here is your femur, and then you have your kneecap, which is your patella, and then you have your tibia, which is right here, and your fibula on the outside, okay? And then you have your carpals, metacarpals, you know, your foot and your fingers. Uh, you have your radius. You can tell it's a radius because it has a radial dial right here. Your ulna, your humerus, your uh, true ribs, one through five, one, two, three, four, five, and your false ribs, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and your two floating ribs, 11 and 12. Scapula, seven cervical vertebra, and your shoulder girdle, okay? So just a quick run through. So your rectus femoris needs to, uh, is beginning from the very top here, and what it needs to do is begin from there, from the, um, you see this uh, sharp point here? So this is your anterior superior iliac spine or your ASIS, A-S-I-S. -S. Um, and then you have your uh, anterior inferior iliac spine. So A-I-I-S down here. A-S-I-S, A-I-I-S, all right? So we're gonna bring this down and this rectus femoris needs to begin from there, right? So now we're getting that nice uh, sexy tilt of the hips for females. Um, and uh, we don't have to have such a bulky leg uh, now to get that look that you're going for, okay? So um, this needs to come out. Uh, your tensor fascia latte 
is coming off of your aces, right? Your anterior superior iliac spine right here. And it's going around like that. This is for someone who is extremely physically fit, all right? This is actually going to create a form. Generally, uh, for most people, it will not, okay? So uh, where does where is the widest part of the hips generally? That's gonna be at the pubic floor right here, right? So right over there. Also, another spot is on each side of your great trochanter right here, okay? But you don't wanna pull it from the front because that's gonna look weird. You wanna pull it from here, from the side, right? And then have that come down, okay? Um, so we're gonna bring that in so that the legs can come in a bit more. Uh, if you wanna have them out like that, let me show you how to articulate the skeleton real quick, okay? So um, what we have, we need to start polygrouping these. So I'm gonna grab this. If you wanna know how I just did that, I hold control and shift, drag a box, and now it has some polygons associated with it. So now when I hold control shift and I press A, it's gonna bring everything associated with uh, those polygons in terms of mesh by mesh by mesh, right? So now what I want to do is I want to auto group this. I use this so often that I have it in my uh, special hotkey. If you want to find where that is, that's polygroups auto groups, okay? For some reason, I'm being very generous with all my information today, and I hope you're appreciating it. Control shift, drag it, control shift A, uh, auto group, okay? Um, now I'm going to turn symmetry off by pressing X, and I'm going to polygroup uh, this together because those are uh, always gonna move together. And uh, this is also going to move together. But what also moves along with the tibia and fibula is our kneecap, okay? So uh, this is also our patella. So I'm gonna go there. I'm gonna invert it. And uh, I do that by holding control and shift and dragging outside on the canvas, okay? And then I'm going to press Control W to quickly polygroup this. Okay, so anytime that you're going to bend your leg, this patella is going to follow the tibia. It's not going to, uh, in terms of its length, right? It's never going to change its length from here to here. Okay, it's always going to stay there because a ligament is attached to the bottom of the patella, and that is like steel. So it doesn't it doesn't stretch. Now your tendons do stretch, right? So your tendon from your rectus femoris, that V-shaped muscle that's going down your um, the upper leg, which is, what bone is that called? What, is, what, what bone is your upper leg called? Huh? Fiber? What the hell? Who just said fiber? I don't need fiber. Femur, femur, Derek Davila, ZGMG, Santiago, way to go, way to go, okay? So, we're gonna do that over here as well. Boom, 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 boom. All right, so if anybody watched UFC, this is what Conor McGregor broke down here, is the lower part of his tibia, right there. I was watching the, um, uh, the post fight conference and uh, he's Dana White was like, oh, I don't know what bone it was that broke and someone was like lower tibia He was like, I don't know how anybody got that. But yeah, it's lower tibia. I'm like because that's where the bone is All right, see we're smarter than Dana White All right All right, so next thing I want to polygroup is this right here uh, the lumbar spine, okay, so and then uh, we want to polygroup my cervical spine. So that's everything that uh, has to deal with the neck. Okay. And then this is a thoracic spine. Okay. Whenever you're talking about articulating and like bending and doing all, uh, doing all that, your rib cage stays the same. It's not going to flex that much enough to where it's going to make a, a huge, huge um, change, right? Inflates and goes down inflates and goes down but whenever we're like a contortionist where their head's here and it's going around and then their feet are over here your thoracic spine is not what's bending it's your cervical and your lumbar so your thoracic spine is everything attached to a rib cage right so we're going to get that next so we're going to just grab all that control shift a we're going to uh get rid of that 
Uh, well, actually, I think it'd be easier if we grab this and that. And so this is your clavicle and your scapula. These are never going to rotate and move independently, right? They're always going to go together. All right. Um, and then, so we're going to do that to the other side because it's going to work independently as well, right? So boom, boom, control W. Okay. So here on our humerus, um, well, actually, let me bring this back. I'm going to do this symmetrically. Um, uh, control shift A, J, auto group. Boom, right there. Now, your radius and your ulna, you do want to have separate, okay? So everybody, I want you to hold your hand like this. I want you to get your two fingers and put them around your wrist like this. Do it! All right, so try to move your hand over. Try to rotate your wrist and pronate it all the way. Okay, that's not going to work. Okay, it's not going to work. So put your finger here at the bottom of this little bony extrusion right here. Okay, right there. This, and now touch your elbow. These two are connected with, it's the same bone. Okay, so that's this bone right here, right? Um, right here, that's this bone right here, this ulna. Right there, okay? So now we're talking about our radius, okay? So whenever we're flipping our hand over, this is a bone that is moving based on the radial dial here, okay? So now you can put your finger here and rotate and flip-flop your hand back and forth, right? And your ulna stays right here the styloid process of your ulna. So it's not rotating all the bones back and forth. What I see a lot whenever people are articulating a skeleton inside of a mesh is I see all of this being rotated as one, right? I see this and that's not what's happening, okay? So let me show you what's happening. And I'm gonna go to this freaking video. I'm gonna go to this YouTube right now and I swear to God, if I don't have 25 likes already, if I don't have 25 likes already. Five likes. Wow, Dojo, wow. Wow, wow, wow. Okay, all right, whatever. All right, so we're gonna press Control W. We're gonna polygroup this on our own, okay? So now I'm gonna press W again, and we have our gizmo here. If you got in around, was it ZBrush? Four, four and a half, somewhere around there. This is probably the only um, transpose method that you know. But if you press Y, you'll get your old timey transpose. So this was the only thing that was available to us. Uh, and I know through three. I th uh, Daisuke, if I'm wrong about that, definitely feel free to correct me. But um, yeah, we didn't get the gizmo until later on. And um, so now we have this, right? So now this is QWERTY, right? So uh, W-E-R. So I'm gonna press R to rotate and uh, let's bring everything back. Okay, so we're gonna mask this, invert the mask, and then we're gonna grab this hand. Um, we're gonna clear it and polygroup it. And, uh, oh, okay, so it's gonna clear everything. All right, so now we have it polygrouped. So now we can do quick quick easy selections okay so now whenever I rotate this it's rotating on this pivot in the center of our radius and then it's also pivoting right here at the ulna right so this is how your hand is uh, rotating back and forth right that's how your hand is flopping back and forth okay so boom right there Okay, so if you use this method, you, you know, um, hardly anything in, in art is uh, one button solution, right? So you're gonna have to come in here and you're gonna have to rotate it and put it in line and all that stuff. I know it's such a hard, hard task, but that's how your radius is rotating, okay? So make sure that you do it right from now on. I swear to God, if I see you do it wrong, I'd be so angry. I'm gonna be so angry.
All right. So uh, we're going to do the same thing over here. Boom, boom. We're going to J auto group it. We're good with that. And uh, we're going to grab this. Boop -a -doo. All right. Um, all right. So we're almost done. So boom, control W. Uh, boom, control W. Boom, control W. Boom, control W. OK. So uh, right here, mass, control W. OK. And so now we've got everything set up. Right, so now we can articulate the skeleton pretty much any way we want. Okay, so now what I want to do is uh, I want to rotate these legs. Right, uh, let me do this in symmetry. We're not rotate these legs, but uh, adduct these legs. Abduct. Right. All right. So boom, boom, right there. And so um, if we are going to, I'm going to go back. I'm going to press Y again. It's going to take me back to our good old gizmo. Um, and, uh, it looks like, uh, ZBrush 4R8, whenever ZBrush Core was in, uh, introduced is whenever we got that. So, thank you, Daisuke. If y'all know Daisuke, he streams here on ZBrush Live, does, uh, really, really interesting work, answers a whole lot of questions, and very, very nice. So, make sure to give him a hello, give him a follow, all that good stuff. All right, so if we want to rotate this out, we can do that, but then our feet are gonna be over there, okay? So but something like that, if you wanna go that way. All right. So um, let's go here. Okay. Boom, 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 boom. There we go. All righty. Um, so let's talk about the leg a little bit more. So this needs to go down, all right? Uh, let me turn this off. So this is your sartorus, right? This is kind of like a rubber band that goes uh, from your aces, your anterior superior iliac spine, and it goes to the head of your tibia right here. So it's going and going back up, okay? So your rectus femoris is coming from the anterior inferior iliac spine. So we just need to shave that off. It's just a little bit too much, okay? Uh, so it goes down there and it, it uh, goes down the femur and then it becomes a tendon and goes to the head of our patella right here. And this is that ligament that I was talking about here. So your kneecap is uh, skin and bone, right? Al dente to the bone. So you want your mesh to the bone and then you want to bring this down, bring that down, bring it over there. Okay. Uh, your vastus lateralis is always going to be touching the very corner of your patella and it attaches to your femur. So you want to make sure it's not going off this way or anything. It should be on the femur. Okay. Uh, your hamstrings. Um, let's see. Let's get this. Get that. Move this in. So you should have like a shelf for your hamstrings. Uh, dependent on how developed they are on your character, right? Um, so I'm gonna grab this, boom, bring that that way, so it's a little bit more uh, natural. Um, and BMN. Uh, so if you haven't used BMN, it's infinite depth, so it goes straight through, just wherever your camera is going, it goes infinitely back. So you want to be careful with it whenever. Um, you know, if I was going to do this and then I'm going to do that, you're going to see how it's pulling uh, very abnormally. So it's much better whenever you have an orthographic view and you're using it that way. Um, seems to work better for me. Okay. So the problem with this leg here is it's just too puffy towards the end, right? It's becoming a tendon here. So we want to make sure that, um, uh, that it's not gaining volume as it's becoming a tendon, right? Uh, tendons neutralize form or react to form underneath it, right? That's that's also it doesn't create forms, okay? Um, obviously, it has form itself, but it's not like a muscle where muscles create form, right? Tendons just attach. So we're gonna have our adductors here, um, and you should see the depending on how developed they are. You should see the adductors back here as well because they're attaching to, you see these right here that look like evil eyes? Those are your sitting bones. That's what you're sitting on right now, uh, if you have correct posture, of course. 
So um, they need to go down that way, okay? And they need to go also to the head of the tibia, okay? So you have your sartorus, you have your adductors, right? Bringing things to center, um, going uh, around the side of the knee, and then attaching to the head of the uh, tibia, okay? So you have this here um, going around right there. Smooth, 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 smooth. And um, let's see. And it's just a little bit too much form right here. Just depends on, you know, what kind of character this is. Is she a muscular individual? Is she a, um, uh, is she just slightly athletic? Is she, you know, there's just so many different body styles. And uh, it has to do a lot with uh, the bony landmarks and how you describe those. So if you want a more muscular, you have everything dive into the bony landmark, right? So let me show you what I mean by that on the traps, okay? So uh, here on the traps, um, you can take a look at it and you can see, um, let's do normal traps first, okay? So first thing is we need the cylinder of the neck, okay? We need uh, this very cylindrical. For females, you want a very, uh, a much, uh, not as wide a neck, all right? Uh, reason is, is because the mastoid process um, determines the uh, volume of the sternocleidomastoid, okay? Which is adding width to your neck. So the more testosterone you have, the larger the mastoid process, the larger the uh, sternocleidomastoid. So we want to ensure, you know, if it's um, uh, if it's female and she's not, you know, super jacked or anything, then we want to keep that within the jawline, right? So um, here we just want to make sure it's nice and cylindrical from the silhouette, not the information within, but definitely the silhouette, okay? So now your body type is conflicting in the trap area because you have things... Um, kind of going into these bony landmarks, right? So if I dug this in and just left everything else the same, you can see how your trap is going in, right? So that's signifying to me that she is muscular. So if I level off into the bony landmark here, boom, 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 right there, then it's going to seem much more natural. Well, not natural, but uh, much more uh, normal uh, what we see day to day, right? So you want to make sure if you want uh, muscularity, so now I'm going to make her extremely muscular, okay? So, um, and also the clavicles should be the highest point, right? Your spine is al dente as well, to the bone, right? Your mesh should be to the bone, and you're going to highlight the very ends of um, the vertebra here. Uh, the more um, pronounced they are, the more emaciated the character is. So you just want to hint at it, right? So just getting my standard brush and just hinting at it, smoothing it out, because you can see like the more height there is on each one of these, the more uh, skeletal she's going to look, right? So you want to be very careful with that. Anyway, so um, so here we've got the spine of the scapula, the blade of the scapula, and we want to make her muscular, okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to buff this up right here, and everything's going to be diving into this bony landmark right here. So boom, 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 boom. Traps come from the back of your neck and go out. You can have uh, one line going like this right there and so now she's bulking up right right so hopefully um hopefully you can grasp that so you know bony landmarks aren't just something that we talk about something that's um something we say because we want to sound fancy or whatever it's literally um crucial to you describing the correct uh, body type every time, okay? So make sure that you know these bony landmarks. 
<clears throat> and you know how to uh, uh, illustrate them as well. So it makes your life easier because you don't want to be going around and constantly fidgeting with this and that and this and that. Um, trying to find the right look and it's because it doesn't matter how much you move it all around because you don't have your bony landmarks right so it's very simple you just go to the internet you go and you type in bony landmark diagram and it's gonna pull up a skeleton it's gonna have all the bony landmarks and you just memorize one a day right if, it, if, you, if you're not good at remembering things, then memorize one a week and just memorize it on Monday and reinforce it throughout the week in your studies, right? And then go to the next one. So you can start from the top of the head, from the feet, uh, from the left to the right. It's all up to you, okay? So um, uh, make sure you understand those. Make sure you know them by heart, okay? It's only going to make you a better sculptor. So definitely do it, okay? So uh, down here we need, um, so let's complete this mastoid, uh, sternocleidomastoid, okay? So down here, by the time it gets to the head of the sternum, so it attaches to the head of the sternum, not the clavicles, okay? So here we need to get our throat in there, um, and you can see how very angular this is. We wanna soften this out a bit more. You can see how far away the neck is from the spine. So it's making the neck thicker than it needs to be. And it's not ever going to look uh, extremely feminine until you uh, you fix that, okay? So we're gonna put the ear where it belongs, put this skull right there, put this face right here. And your bottom lip rests on your top uh, gums, right? So just Close your mouth for once. Lift up your top lip. There it is, right there on your top gums. So make sure that you align it that way, okay? Uh, put that chin in, put all that in there. Get this forehead way more subtle so it doesn't look uh, so masculine. Right there bring all this in you see how wide your jaw is look automatically looks more feminine right so you want to make sure your jaw isn't too I mean there's uh, there's obviously uh, females with uh, nice angular jaws right but you got to mix it all together you got to mix in the length of the jaw the angle of the uh, mandible and all that together and then you should uh, be able to create those type of um, uh, facial styles, okay? Make sure that your temple has been sculpted in. Uh, you see on the side how far away this is from the skull, so we wanna bring that down. Smooth out the difference, accentuate this temple, and so now we've got that uh, skeletal um, uh, landmark of the eyebrow going up and going in right and so here you want to make sure this is all uh al dente right there's not going to be a huge amount of muscle right here on your temple it's just um you just have your orbicularis oris going around right so boom this muscle right here okay so um yeah uh, right there and length of jaw angle of jaw Here's your uh, masseter right here. Or not your masseter, your malar right there. Right, so if you wanna make, her, make him look really gaunt, you just take all the fat out of here. And then this angle goes there. So this is your masseter right here. Okay. Right there. Uh, your nose is turned up. I mean, if that's what you wanna do, that's fine. I mean, if that's the kind of person you are, you turn your nose up to everybody, that's fine, ZGMG. Okay, you gotta bring your nostrils back. Um, and then you have duck lips, okay? So you gotta, you don't want V lips, right? You want a barrel, imagine a barrel underneath here, okay? All right. Uh, turning up the nose is feminine. 
I mean, guys have turned up noses. Uh, in terms of uh, the nose and making it feminine or not, um, the glabella of females is generally lower than a male's is. So this trapezoid right here, right, is uh, either longer or lower on a female um, and which brings the nose closer to the upper lips, right? So uh, that's the only thing I can think of in terms of um, structure of the nose, uh, lending itself to being uh, female or male. That would be it. So an upturned nose is stylistically female, but anatomically, no. Right? And plus, you don't want to get in the trap of doing the same nose over and over and over again, right? Because then you're going to be like, oh, it's ZGMG. Oh, how can you tell? Well, the nose is the same nose every time. Yeah, for every female he does, it's always upturned, right? You don't want to get into that habit. So there's stylistic choices, uh, but you need to know anatomy. You need to know anatomy. So if you're learning anything and you actually want one-on-one, -on -one, uh, instruction uh, I do offer mentorships at XMD Academy um, there's six weeks one-on-one -on -one, so it's not a classroom or anything like that um, and then you can also get the on-demand as well uh, there's payments uh, structures for both of these you can get the on-demand study 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 if you still didn't get everything in the hundred plus videos that I put in here then you can get my mentorship and it's only the difference of the two, right? So you don't have to buy it again. So um, if you ever want to do that, you just got to email me, let me know. Or um, if you're part of the uh, ZBrush Discord, uh, the official Pixelogic Discord, you can uh, hit me up in there as well. Okay, um, so we're just going to make sure this is Igomatic right there. Okay. So now it's looking much more feminine. Uh, let's uh, fix this uh, this neck. It's just a little bit too wide, and these traps are way too high. Okay. Bring these in. Boom! Right there, smooth. Boom. And then you see how balloony this uh, the end of this skull is. So you want to take that out as well. Okay. So straight across from the nose is the end of the skull in terms of it coming back in, okay? Not its furthest point out and then coming in, all right? So this is your occipital protuberance right here. And let me get to the chat because I haven't, I haven't checked the chat like two weeks. So let me check chat and answer your questions in just a second. All right. Um, but, uh, and then uh, for breasts, I wouldn't worry about breasts. Uh, just worry about the pectoralis. Um, worry about the pectoralis and getting that. And then you can sculpt a breast separately and then put it on there. Okay. So, boom, right there. Get this uh, pectoralis. Boom, going down to five, going back. And get this. Okay. Get your pectoralis set up. Um, and then you can put breasts on top, okay? So you see all this space here. We want to bring that all down. Al dente, all right? So I want you to go through here, and I want you to make sure your rib cage is very close to the mesh here. You see all this puffiness right here, which is adding to her thickness. And now you have to make everything else, like those legs, extremely thick to compensate. Right, so what we need to do is really focus on this torso and ensuring that everything is, uh, all the bony landmarks are al dente, okay? Alrighty, so have fun and we'll see you next week, all right? Crafty canvas, you're waiting till the day to do your homework? Jeez, 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 jeez. Shame, shame, shame. All right, so we're starting from the very top. Uh, let's see, uh, Zinchui, thank you very much for being here. Skull Hat, Jolly Roger, Christ Jesus, 
What's going on, brother? Carbon 44, 44, 44, the Marco Keo. Uh, just start working and nothing like seeing you live to inspire me. Thank you very much, brother. Comics legend, hi Spicer, good evening. How do you power through a challenging day of work? Uh, just realize that it's gonna be over. Like when you're first off sitting in an air conditioned room, sitting on your ass, listening to music, watching YouTube and sculpting should never be challenging, right? So you just gotta bring it into, you gotta put it in comparison to everything else that's going on outside, right? So in terms of that, you're in heaven, right? You can sit there, you can pause for a little bit and then play a video game and then come back. It's not challenging at all. So just don't think of it as challenging. Uh, yeah, you might have a challenging client, a challenging uh, project, something like that. Um, and it's not something you just flip, right? In terms of an attitude towards work, but it's something you work over time and train your brain to think differently, okay? And I heard a joke. How do you make an artist complain? Give him some work to do. Uh, Pixelogic Daisuke, my anatomy knowledge. This is a bone. Here's another bone. Hey, man. If that works for you, then you're good, really. Christ Jesus. You should definitely get a medical degree. <laughs> mm. Stephen Garrett, let's see those ankles. Uh, uh, you said there's tension with the fascia latte, tensa fascia latte, tensa fascia latte. Uh, Jolly Roger, appreciate it. Thank you very much. Um, ZGMG, everyone should leave a like real quick. You damn right. Um, J21, appreciate it. Um, uh, fiber, femur, 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 femur. I have never seen a skeleton inside a transparent model before, so this is new to me. Yeah, this is, uh, uh, they've been doing this for hundreds of years. So it was just, you know, like they would, uh, draw a skeleton and then they would clip the wires and then they would put the wires together and then they would bend it at the points. And I mean, it's, it's basically putting a, um, what is it called? Um, you know, like a wire frame inside of your mesh and just ensuring that everything's um, uh, proportional. Uh, oh, you're polygrouping based on the range of motion. Yes, yes, yes. Um, what's up, Harry Mandibles? Um, uh, Wyatt Arthur, I'm on FB, my bad. No worries, no worries. Uh, Angel De Rosa. And just hit 26 and rising. All right. Um, uh, Pixelogic uh, Dasuki Transpose. That's what it is. Transpose Action Lines is what those were called. Uh, Frank Uchi. How you been, Spicer? Good to see you. Good to see you too, Frank. Thanks for being here, brother. I appreciate it. I'm doing great. I have zero complaints. Uh, Vine49. Uh, thank you so much. I finally understand. We are unlocking that knowledge. All right. Uh, Stuff Frog, what's up? Uh, Stephen Garrett, it's too hard to do. Okay. Fine, be that way. Um, what's up, Talden? Uh, Sergio Santel, what's going on? Doing great. Thank you very much. Um, my pleasure for the shout out, Pixelogic. This is great. Um, uh, D Zinc in the house. Make sure to go follow D Zinc on Twitch. That's where he's streaming. Uh, I don't think he posts much to YouTube. So yeah, make sure to go uh, follow him. He streams, I think, every Thursday night, if I'm uh, not mistaken. But yeah, he's really good with the chat, uh, and he's always working on something cool. So check him out. Uh, Wyatt Arthur, my neck is the same width as my jaw. It's messed up. Well, hey, man, you got some good genetics here, brother. You just need to need to start lifting, clanging and banging. Uh, are your ankles a bony landmark? Yes, they are. They're called the molealis. Uh, lateral on the outside and medial on the inside. Uh, laterals lower than the medial. Um, uh, and Gordo MCC already knows it. 
Uh, can you use this for skeleton for male sculpts as well? No. No, you cannot unless you want him looking like a woman. Maybe you do. Um, so what you need to do is uh, Bad King ZTL Skeleton. Those are going to be the keywords. And it should be the first one here. Uh, you can go here. Uh, this is... Um, one of our uh, one of our friends over at the ZB Ho, uh, he runs this site, um, and you just need to log in. It's a free account. Uh, if you can, make sure you give him a little donation. Keeping these sites up and keeping all the maintenance on this and all the stuff on there is, um, you know, it costs money and time. So definitely help him out. Buy him a hamburger or something. You know, give him five bucks or something. But you can go here and you can get a male skeleton for free. It's by Benjamin R. Wilson. This is the one that I use on all of my um, projects, either uh, private or client. And um, this is the one that I rely on uh, the most. So you can go check that out. Okay. Um, let's see. Um, yeah, so mech designs a uh, free skeleton that's a male skeleton the female skeleton it already comes with zbrush you just go to tool you go to ryan kingsland model and as long as you're on the top sub tool um then you've got your skeleton here and it is uh, uh female right so you've also got uh, all this muscle structure so if you want to study that you can do that as well okay so, <clears throat> yeah, so male go to Bad King, female is already in ZBrush. Uh, uh, doo -doo -doo. Alex DK, thanks for being here. Shay RX, thank you very much. Uh, Genius84, spice, spice, babe, babe, ding, 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 a ding, ding. What's up, brother? Brimstone. Make sure you go check out Brimstone. Super cool dude. Uh, streams. I'm not sure if he streams every week, but when he streams, it's definitely a cool place to hang out. So go check him out. Genius84, great mentorship, by the way. Thank you very much, Genius. Appreciate that. Craft and Canvas coming in hot. Um, uh, ZGMG, how long are the one on one sessions? They're an hour uh, for six weeks. So um, uh, once a week we meet for an hour it's just you and me it's not anybody else uh, before that we do a small interview it takes about 15 minutes uh, just to figure out where you are um, where you want to go uh, and where uh, where I think I can help you out the most and then uh, if you're good enough to do a complete uh, collectible then we'll do the entire collectible if you need work on your anatomy then we'll just do a simple contrapposto and, and work on that and make sure that um that we correct all of your uh foundations and ensure that uh going forward you can be autonomous in uh furthering your anatomy knowledge and sculpting um um For Pete's sake, read the chat. <laughs> Wyatt Arthur, as someone completely new, is there a default skeleton model? Like how we should set the, this up? Yeah, so I just answered that. Uh, backing or the one that's already in ZBrush. Ashra Bolson Spicer, what's going on? Uh, ZGMG, uh, you're very welcome. Genius84, ZBrush has a default skeleton. Um, where are we uh, man, you should make a live every day, the Marco Keo. Uh, if I had time, if I'm streaming every day, that means I don't have client work. All right, <laughs> just so you know. Uh, Fabio Luciano, hello, Master Brazil here. Nice to have you here. Um, yo, what up? IR Sculpts, he was streaming um, just a couple nights ago here on Pixelogic Live. He also uh, has a stream of his own, so make sure to go check out IR Sculpts. He and I are we're dining and clanging and banging, keeping track of each other, making sure we're looking like dime pieces. Um... Mm, 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 mm. Ooh, 
Captain Canvas is in trouble with a Nightbot. Mm. Ignacio, what's going on? Um, bad Nightbot. You're now, now you're scared to talk. <laughs> Just in case, what's going on? Uh, doo -doo. Just hearing this track levels you up. It's the 10 year as of yesterday for Kingsland Skeleton. Oh, yeah, 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 that's right. MJ Sculpts Rafficer said he also has a great Equoshay model you can download for free to use as a reference from his website. Oh, yeah. Um, what's up, Richie Lopez? Appreciate you lurking. Uh, IR Sculpts clanging and banging in D, getting shredded. Calories in, calories out. Uh, when merging all subtools for a character and selecting each part, is that done using polygroups? Um, I rarely merge all my subtools together. Uh, just because it's going to be either too high poly or not enough resolution to capture everything. So I like to keep things separately. But uh, polygroups are for within that subtool, right? So you can select those. But if you have another subtool with different polygroups, you can't just click on that and it's going to only show that part or hide it. So, um, uh, let's see when merging. So hopefully that answers your question, Genius. Crafting Canvas, can't wait to show off my first head sculpt before our mentorship and after Spicer gave me an entire makeover. I'm like a new person. Thank you very much, sister. I appreciate that. Uh, the Marco Keo, I would love to do a mentoring, but I'm very poor. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, sometimes we do uh, scholarships. So if we're going to do that, I will definitely announce it and let everybody know. Um, but yeah, just keep your ears open. Make sure you're watching the stream here because I always announce pretty much everything here on uh, Pixelogic Live. Anything wrong with using a skeleton as a starting reference for stylized sculpts? Uh, it might be a little confusing just because uh, stylized uh, characters are in the extremes of, uh, you know, of contrast. So, you know, you have a big old jaw and a small top head. So you'd be spending a lot of time adjusting the skeleton to fit inside of that particular stylized uh, sculpt. So um, that's the reason that you um, go through and um, like uh, you do your studies with the skeleton in terms of getting uh, your um, your practice down over and over and over again and that way whenever you go to um, to your stylized sculpts you can um, you can just kind of improv on it for lack of a better term you don't really need a skeleton because you've done it so many times with a skeleton that your your memory is there right um we could do um uh, great lots of work and it feels uh oh yeah always good always good to have uh, a bunch of work always good um just in case hey spicer what's the best way to crack a mesh and zbrush i made a ghost in a shell but i have an issue making the skin that flies off look good um Crack, uh, how to crack a mesh. I mean, the easiest thing to do is just to simulate it in a third party package and then you'll get the best results that way. If you wanna do it by hand, um, I would use a slice brush and then uh, separate by poly groups, right? So <clears throat> let's take a sphere, let's make a poly mesh uh, that, BSI, um, and we've got, uh, this is a slice brush, right? So we've got that, that, this this that you can also curve it by clicking alt once you can um make it really sharp by clicking alt twice right and then you can split by polygroups so you can go split uh group split always okay and now each one of these is a separate piece and you can kind of uh go to each piece and move it out and crack it and do whatever you want to do so hopefully that answers or at least that's one way of uh doing it so, um, yep. Um, or in that, I, if I was, if they're like, I want crumbled 
I want this statue to like crumble. I wouldn't slice it by hand and do it all. I would just simulate it because it's going to get a, a much more believable result. Right? Um, Jimbo, glad to have you here, brother. Um, the Marco Keo, yeah, I'm trying to learn as much as I can. I've already done some little jobs as a freelancer, so someday I'll be able to gather to invest in my studies. Um, yeah, um, yeah, if, I mean, like I said, you can join the Discord. Um, you can join the Discord and submit your pieces like everybody just did right now. <laughs> All right, uh, what do we got? I got one more hour, uh, and then it's clang and bang time. So uh, I'm going to go through as much of these as I can. Um, Brimstone, we're already in mentorship together, so I'll see if I can get to yours. But um, uh, let's see what we got. Pelas. Pelas has something for us. Um, let's go. Oh nine. Oh nine. Alrighty. Uh, this is an evil goblin head from Wasim. Uh, we got Derek Devilla back. Uh, lower leg anatomy. Um, what female alien character? Um, we'll see what I can do for this, uh, in terms of, um, uh, anatomy and all that. Uh, 12, 12. Alrighty. Uh, and then we'll get Brimstone. You got that ZTL straight up in there. Don't even give me an external link, baby. Alrighty. So we got that. So if you want to join the Discord and get your uh, pieces uh, critiqued by me uh, here live on Pixelogic Live, first, make sure you like the video. Second, make sure you subscribe so you never miss any of our amazing presenters here at Pixelogic Live. Shout out to uh, Kyle for all the hard work that he does to keep all of us cats wrangled. Really, really appreciate you. Um, uh, ZGMG, uh, commit the skeleton to memory first. Yes, 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 yes. Um, thanks for the bad king, uh, skeleton recommendation. My pleasure. Um, but yeah, if you don't have, um, uh, if you're poor, don't have any money, um, trying to save some money and put it together, uh, feel free to join the discord and submit your pieces for critique and, uh, at least you can get something. You know, you can get something. Uh, and I can go over your mesh and try to help you out so you can get more freelance gigs so you can take my course. Alrighty. Um, uh, there you go. Just reminded me, I gotta drag the bag into the car. Oh yeah, carbon. Um, Alright, sounds good. Brimstones and chwi. What's going on? Lord Kyle. Uh, TL 101 art, what's going on? What you up? Okay, so let's go to our, uh, what was our first one? Our first one, this is number eight, so we're on nine. Okay, so let's go to nine, there it is. Okay, so, oh nice, really great. Um, let's see. So, what, um, let's take a look. Um, so first thing <clears throat> around the eye is, um, that it doesn't have a lot of depth in here, right? So if you want it to look, uh, masculine, which I'm assuming you do. So, um, we want to have a brow here, right? want to have that there okay uh we also want to get a whole lot more contrast in here uh in terms of the orbit okay so move this around put that in there um put that right there 
your nose you can have it uh kind of broken like this uh, if you want it. if he's like a fighter or something uh, you can definitely do that you're gonna have the end of the um, nasal aperture but then you need to hang this nose off of it so it does need to come forward a little bit um, unless you just want to punch it in uh, and get it kind of stylized that's that's fine as well so um, we're gonna move these nostrils back so they're a little bit further um, <clears throat> Uh, a little bit further um, in the nasal aperture, right? Um, next, uh, we want to add the forehead, okay? So you can pretty much just right above uh, the um, the glabella right here, boom, right there, we're going to add the forehead, okay? So smooth, smooth, smooth. Uh, next thing, we're going to bring this across. So this is going to be at the bottom of the orbit should be your ear hole okay so you can bring this down bring that down bring all this over okay and then uh we can go up and then we can go around for our temporal arch right and come back to the ear so boom 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 right there and that way your temporalis is diving into your zygomatic right so the, this bone right here that's on the side right here coming from your ear hole is your zygomatic, okay? So next is gonna be your malar. So this is like the front of your face right here. And then uh, this is going to end at the bottom of your nose right there, okay? So your, um, the bottom of your zygomatic going into your malar, it's gonna, it's gonna be an oblique angle roughly that way, okay? So boom, 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 okay? Um, next, at the corner of this malar right here, this is your malar eminence. And so from there, you're gonna go back that way, okay? Your jaw is going behind your ear. You wanna make sure it's in front of your ear, okay? If you open and close your mouth with your, um, with your finger right on the uh, outside of your tragus, you're gonna feel space go in there right and that's because your temporal mandibular joint is dislocating and reloading relocating itself over here so your jawline doesn't go back here because it ends right here at your temporal mandibular joint or your tmj okay uh your lips uh they're gonna need a whole lot more contrast so literally just digging them in more is going to help uh, if you want, you know, with the broken nose that you have here, you can probably get away with a little bit of an underbat. So, uh, B-I-N, I'm going to fill that up. So that's up to you uh, in terms of the style that you want to communicate this character to the rest of us with. Um, and your top lip uh, should be, or your bottom lip comes from within your top lip. Okay, so um, B and B. There we go. So we're gonna have our Cupid's bow right here. Um, and then the part that comes off, uh, the the part of your bottom lip that comes off of your face the most is directly in the center right here, right? So we're gonna dig this around. You can have some space for your, uh, for your mental eminence or your chin, um, but your chin is going to be housed right here, okay? Um, it can get wider, of course. You know, you can look at the great Kali and you can see uh, him and, um, and how wide his chin is. But he has gigantism, right? So, um, so we want to be careful whenever we're using that shape language that we use it for the appropriate, uh, appropriate characters, okay? Uh, next thing, uh, your uh, septum is a little too wide. We want to bring that in bring this forward and uh you can have you know whatever type of nose that you want you just want to have the major elements of it right so your nostrils your alar cartilage your septal cartilage and uh you want to have three hits right so you want to have your glabella you want to have your uh, nasal aperture and then you want to have your septal cartilage going into your alar cartilage right here okay and then your alar cartilage is kind of like two uh, cashews right here. And then just uh, make sure you don't have too much volume around here, okay? So your philtrum, the thing that's right here, um, that comes from each side of your uh, 
septum right here, okay? So boom, right there. And then you wanna have three pads for your lips. One coming together from the philtrum right here and going right there and then um, and then going around, okay? So, uh, and then we wanna make sure, at least when we're setting things up, that they're nice and even, right? Whenever we get further along in the sculpting process and you've gotten to this point much, much faster, then we can talk about, you know, uh, a variation of life. But for right now, we're just gonna set you up with a few things that you can take home and uh, use on your next sculpt, okay? So here, uh, we're gonna bring that this is um, this little hit right here. Uh, boom, boom, BMV. Um, this hit right here is called your lacrimal punctum. So this is gonna come out. This is where your tears uh, come out of. And then you have another lacrimal punctum on the bottom. So you can see how your eyelid is just rolling into your eye. I'm using the Damien standard and I am uh, creating a little bit more of a lid here. Right, so you want, you know, it's an eyelid, so you definitely want a lid to it, okay? And then you're gonna have your uh, infraorbital furrow here. So that's on every single person. Every single person has this infraorbital furrow. And um, uh, sometimes it's hidden, sometimes it's not. Just depends on the expression and the body fat percentage, okay? Your tarsal plates, you wanna make sure that those are going around your eye, okay? This bottom tarsal plate is gonna go from one corner of your eye to the next, okay? So we've got something a little bit more presentable, okay? Um, and let's see. So you also need the nodes of your mouth. These are very important because they articulate the corners of your mouth right here because you have your zygomatic uh, major, you have your buccinator, and you have your depressor, which all articulate all that stuff, okay? So you definitely want to have the node of the mouth. Some people have it really, really pronounced, some don't. So it's, again, it's up to you uh, how much you wanna pronounce all of these features, but you need to, um, you just need to sculpt them in, okay? Like we said on the last one, straight across from the bottom of the nose is where the end of the skull is going to be. Not the occipital protuberance, which is right here, but the end of your skull as it's going back in, okay? Make sure that your neck always has a curve going this way, okay? Always, 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 all right? Because your cervical spine always goes that way. If I have a spine like this, that's a broken neck, okay? If you ever saw anyone with a neck like that, you'd, you'd be like, hey, dude, you all right? So you just want to be, be very careful, okay? Uh, also, your head is coming out wide towards the front and then skinny towards the back. I want you to reverse that. Okay, and right around the ears, I want it to be the widest. And then I want it to come back in together. Okay, so it should look like uh, like uh, an egg from aliens. Right. Okay. So the highest point of your head should be the back third of your head which is generally right above the ears if your ears are um uh, where they should be okay so we're gonna bring this back so his head's not too long and we're gonna bring that there widen that there we go okay uh next your sternocleidomastoid right here it's gonna go down and into the clavicle Uh, hey Spicy, how do you open the mouth? I always had a problem with that. Uh, I would just uh, mask it, rotate it, and then re-sculpt it. Um, that's the way I would do it. Uh, in terms of, like, if... I don't know what problem there is, but if, there's no, like, one-button solution or anything like that. Unless you already have topology in there, but even then, you're still going to need to... Um, to re-sculpt uh, a lot of things, just to make sure it looks right. Alrighty, so um, here, we can add some submental fat here if we want. So that's gonna be relegated to your mental eminence, right? It's not gonna go beyond that. So we're not gonna go all the way out here. If you wanna go all the way out here, this is your jowling. So this is going to be run right under 
your um, your uh, nasal labial fold. Okay. Alrighty. So right there, right there. Okay. And then if you want fat back here, that's your temporal mandibular fat. So temporal mandibular fat. Okay. It goes down right there. So it's going to soften all that. Right. Uh, if you want it to read as a masculine chin, then we don't want it to come to a point. All right. What we want to do is we want to spread it out a little bit and either flatten it. Or if you want super testosterone, you get a little curve in here. Okay. So, uh, yeah, I think it's more than enough information for you right now, uh, just on the face. Um, so if you want to take another crack at it and then send it back, uh, I'd be more than happy to take a look at it for you. So we can take a look at what it is and what it was. Okay. Okay. So a whole lot more information in here. Still a lot of things I would fix and re-sculpt but um but yeah that's that all right dark goblin uh this one is by uh derek develop or wait no wasim 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 okay so uh right here you need your infraorbital furrow right so around your eye you see how your eye is uh swallowing your eyelid so we want to change that. We want an equal distance around the eye. See how it's coming out too much over here? We want to bring that back. Equal distance, except when we get to the cantal tendon right here, okay? Because we have a tendon that's pulling uh, this to the infraorbital furrow that you're missing right here. Oh, I hate it when the brush does that. Right there, okay? So this is your infraorbital furrow right there. And then we want the tarsal plate, which is going to go from the corner of the eye to the corner of the eye. And then you just smooth it out. So you want these tarsal plates to have a sense that they're going in, right? You don't want them flat up and down. Okay. So for all this, uh, I would um, get this. Uh, let's see. Okay, it is. Uh, get this and make sure that your tarsal plate is going behind your eye. It's rolling around your eye at least a little bit before uh, it goes up into the head right here, okay? Um, um, oh man, trust me. Pixelogic Dasuki, we need a spice or roast your artwork special. Oh, trust me, I bite my tongue every time, every time. Cause I know that can demean or it can uh, <laughs> destroy someone's <laughs> Um, uh, their motivation, so I never do it, but yeah, I always got something rude and funny to say, that's for sure. Alrighty, so you have your lacrimal punctum right here. Uh, if you want to make them look evil, then uh, keep uh, the canthal tilt very uh, oblique, okay? Because for men, uh, that looks very evil, for women, it looks very uh, alluring. Because we love danger, ladies. We love danger. All right. So uh, we're going to reinforce this um, this orbit here with some uh, soup fat right here. That's on the edge of your eye. But now we've got a whole lot more believable eye. And that's the biggest thing here that we need to accomplish. Okay. Um, here, I'll probably still have the uh, superciliary arches here. And still put that there. Okay. Right there, I would uh, also be quite aggressive with the forehead. And if you want them to look a little bit more, um, um, if you want them to look a little bit more menacing, then what we want to do is put like a, imagine a shark head. Right? Imagine a shark head where it's got that peak. Boom. Now, let's take a look at each one of these. Right? So, boom. Right? So, which one seems more friendly? Okay. 
which one looks more interesting now right so um uh consider that um non every sculpt obviously but um but whenever you're trying to do that okay um also i'll probably bring his forehead forward a little bit more and uh add a few more bits of information here so your nostril i would define where it is because it seems like you're it could be this or it could be that right so just choose which one it's going to be and uh, send it back a little bit further um, and then make sure that your nostrils end and that your alar cartilage begins so um, i know that you know this is a goblin and everything but it does have a human face there's just slight changes here and there in terms of proportions so we're still going to have uh, the main elements of what makes up a human face, such as cartilage and all that. So here we want to make it a little bit softer. Okay. And we want to roll this out. This is going to be very um, uh, organic. And then the front of your nose is going to be very hard surface in comparison. Okay. So we're going to have this roll back up in there and then we're going to have our septal cartilage come down and attach to the bottom of our nasal aperture um you can you know there's so many ways that you can style this nose um i would probably prefer something a little bit more classic um right in there boom boom okay so next thing is that your jawline is very soft right uh it's pretty much like that and so what I would do um, is I would accentuate that angle of the jaw a little bit more. So we don't want to bring it back, right? I'm just, uh, it's just that yours is so curved that I'm straightening it from here to here, right? I'm not pulling this back. I'm giving a straight line to the uh, length of the jaw. And now we're going to work on the angle of the jaw. So that's going to be this bit right here. Okay. All right, and then flatten that out. Uh, you can, you know, obviously uh, put some jowling on him. There's really no rules on that. I think the more um, uglier he looks, the better. Um, so we want to give him a little bit more of a ridiculous chin. And it's going to uh, give us a bit more of a, some more information in there that we can have some fun with. And then uh, go ahead and accentuate his uh, hyoid bone right there uh make sure you have a curve in this in the cervical spine straight across from the nose is the end of the skull not the uh, occipital protuberance um and then uh maybe if you want to make him look a little bit more menacing um we're gonna be mk uh boom 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 i'm masking the orbit and then i'm going to jesus B and B. Oh, come on now. B and B. Um, what I'm going to do is bring all this forward so his eyes are even more sunken in and looks. Uh, I'm going to turn off that. Boom. Um, and so he looks even more ghostly and demonic. Okay. Um, and then I'm going to take this chance to kind of restructure this orbit so it looks a little bit more. Um, more what we would expect. We don't want to subvert people's expectations too much because then they're just going to be confused. Hence the MCU. Um, alrighty. Um, okay. So now we've got a whole lot more information in here. It looks a whole lot more uh, menacing. At least uh, for me. Uh, make sure you accentuate this. There's your nice nodes of the mouth right here. Uh, deep in that nasal labial fold right in there. Uh, it's coming uh, from your canthal tendon right here. Uh, right there. And we're just going to pat it a little bit so it's not so angular and have this come out. And you can add a whole lot of the uh, temporal mandibular 
and carry it over into your jowling down here. All right, so anytime you give anybody a jowl like this, it's going to age them tremendously. So be very careful with um, with how you use that information. All right, that uh, that language right there. All right, so here and then uh, three pads as well. Uh, if you want to close the mouth up, uh, use inflate and just close it up a bit. There you go. Um, and seems kind of like a happy goblin right now. So we can do that right there. And you might want to make these eyes really, really big as well. Just so it has a little bit more character, right? Think about that as well, right? Um, I'm trying to think of there's something else I can do here. I feel like there is, um, and then just make sure that your sternocleido is coming towards uh, your sternum and not going because yours are flaring out like this. Even though that we're sketching, uh, make sure right behind the ear is a mastoid process. You can feel it. You can just put your finger behind your ear, and you're going to feel this protrusion. And so you always want to have this here. It's part of the shape of the skull. So you definitely don't want to neglect it. From the very end of it, you're going to come down and you're going to attach this to the sternum. All right. Boom, 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 boom. Right there. Okay, and go down. And then you're going to accentuate the uh, hyoid and the cricoid cartilage and bring that, okay? So uh, now um, we can kind of just uh, adjust things, right? Just make this as stylistic and, uh, and as fun as we want. And the more, the more off his proportions are, the better, right? Uh, add some asymmetry. That's always going to help um, bring in a little bit more um, believability because any any uh, any face that's uh, symmetrical is a lie because your face is never symmetrical right so just coming in here and doing that um, adding a little bit more of a of a angle here instead of having it circular which signifies friendly we're having a little bit more angular so we can um, uh, so it, it it adds a little bit, right? So look, look when it was circular, and look whenever it's just got that little bit, right? That little extra bit, okay? Um, and uh, let's see, and then your traps, uh, they come from the back of your neck, and then come out and attach to the uh, front of your clavicle, okay? So. I know uh, a lot of beginners have uh, issue with getting the shoulder girdle or your clavicle correct in terms of when it curves back. So your clavicle is straight out until the end of your neck and then it curves, right? Because that's the reason it's jutting out so all these veins and esophagus and all this stuff can fit in there. Because if it was just a straight line back, it cut it out, right? So we need it straight after the neck then we're gonna have that curve okay so here for this one right after the neck uh now we're gonna get the curve oh and i forgot to do it symmetrically but you get it all right so boom boom straight after the neck it's gonna curve okay all right so um we can come in here. Um, kind of want to get this eyelid a little bit more believable. Um, here, move this over, move that up, move that around. Um, get that canthal tendon, get that canthal tendon, uh, get this tarsal plate. 
right here. Get that edge of the eye. Yeah, that's looking a bit better, right? So, uh, what it is and what it was. So hopefully that helps. Uh, we need a spice of roast your artwork special uh, while doing Ricky and Janet. <laughs> uh, just make them sign a disclaimer before they submit for a roast. Uh, yeah, instant lawsuit after that for sure. Um, our sculpt spice can roast my first sculpt. Full permission. Stoas shark head might be good. ZGMG, yeah, I'd be down for a roast too. <laughs> I don't want to do that, guys. I already look like an asshole. I don't want to continue that. Uh, spicy, if I wanted to take this into a substance painter, how would I do that? Does it have to be unwrapped? Yes, it does. Yes, you do need to uh, get a low poly cage and UV it. And the UVs need to be clean so that um, all of your uh, uh, smart materials and smart masks uh, work. Uh, thanks, Comics Legend. What's going on, Benjo Man? Uh, is it possible to pose asymmetrically and still sculpt symmetrically later? Um, yeah, you can. You can go to transform, uh, use posable symmetry. It needs to be symmetrical, right? So the topology needs to be the same on the left and the right. So then you can change and do all this stuff and you can still sculpt, but it's still going to give you problems. It's still going, if you're gonna pull this way, it doesn't, if I turn my head this way and pull this way, it still has confusion pulling the other side. So uh, you can use it as a block out, uh, but um, very rarely am I going to use that in my secondary or tertiary details. Uh, Eric Zahn got a book from uh, Anatomy for Sculptors from Work. It's very useful. Oh, yeah, that's one of my favorite Anatomy books. Yeah. Alrighty, so hopefully that helped you out, uh, Wasim. Um, and let's go to this one. Okay, so lower leg anatomy study. Okay, so the legs are spread kind kind of far apart. Um, uh, let's see, you can turn in. Um, all right, so let's just work on the silhouette for right now. Uh, what we are going to do is uh, this right here is pretty good, but the peak needs to be up here and then go down. So this is your anterior tibialis, okay? Your calf is uh, looking okay, but we need to put in the bony landmark for the tibia to them ankles, okay? Your, uh, your tibia needs to go a little bit more towards the center. A little bit more, okay? Um, in terms of this, these are two symmetrical across from each other. I would bring this one down, bring that one up, make this a little bit more angular on the inside, and then a little bit more rounder and softer of a transition on the outside. That's just a stylistic choice that I like to do. Okay. Um, your rectus. Uh, it just feels like he's got his hips back. Um, so um, I'm going to try to fix the posture of this real quick. Um, okay. All right. So um, what I would do to kind of fix this is you see how blocky it is? Right? You see how blocky your leg is? It's a little bit more complicated than that. Um, whenever you're setting everything up. So unless he's uh, Mr. Olympia or something like that, uh, then we don't want a lot of Sartorus here, okay? If it is, uh, you know, Ronnie Coleman or something, then we'll bring it up here, but it's still gonna go around and be underneath our vastus lateralis, right? It's never gonna overtake our teardrop muscle right here, okay? It's a vastus medialis 
is what that is, okay? Next thing is that your vastus medialis and your vastus lateralis are pretty much ending on the same horizontal plane, which is going to add, uh, which takes away visual interest, all right? So we wanna be uh, careful that uh, we have some nice uh, oblique angles uh, to this vastus lateralis and medialis here, okay? Uh, you might want to give it a little bit, a little bit more adductors, and uh, possibly bring this in because it feels very, feels kind of feminine, uh, in its, uh, in its foundation. Um, and let's see, there, okay. Um, boom. Okay, so um, we want to have a shelf for our hamstrings. So yours is kind of like just going straight down. Um, and so we want to get, we want our hamstrings to go straight down and then curve in. Okay, we want a bit of a shelf here. Uh, your glutes, um, they're very square, okay? So whenever you're sculpting glutes and they're also going up this way. And uh, what we need to do is we need to bring this down. Your your um, your glutes are coming from here, and they're going around your lats. I mean your um, hamstrings, and then they're going into your vastus lateralis, which is right here. Okay. So uh, the more fat we have, the more uh, horizontal the them butt cheeks are gonna be. Okay. So the more, um, you know, uh, lack of fat, the higher the angle will be because all of this area is just fat here, okay? Sometimes we want that, you know what I'm saying? I mean, come on. All right. Um, all right. And your tensor fascia latte is kind of blocky. Um, what I would do is bring it and make it a little bit more uh, tapered as it goes into the anterior superior iliac spine right there um your rectus femoris uh is filling up too much space make sure you kick it back right there and uh i think it's gonna be easier to kind of restructure this leg as opposed to um uh sculpting over it okay so want that there um okay so uh, here, one, this is gonna be our vastus lateralis, right? So where our hip dips in, that's our uh, great trochanter right here. Uh, it's generally at the pelvic floor right here. And we're going to bring this around. And go around, okay? Uh, and then we're gonna get this vastus lateralis. It's gonna go right there. And then it's gonna go uh, down and attach to the head of our tibia, okay? Uh, this little jaunt that you have, this is coming from the hamstrings, okay? So we're gonna get that. Uh, let me dig in a little bit more. So just think NASCAR whenever you're creating your vastus lateralis, right? Okay? So your hamstrings are pretty much one form up here. This is where your adductors are gonna be, right here. Um, they're gonna pretty much be flat. They're gonna go across, go across, go across. And then they're gonna split and go to each side of your knee. This one's gonna to go to the head of your tibia on the medial side. This one is gonna to go to the head of your fibula right there, okay? So that's, um, let's see, that's generally at the uh, sitting bone or kneeling bone right around there, okay? So your hamstring comes out and attaches right there. Okay. Uh, your sartorus, your adductors, and your semitendinosus membranosus is all attaching to the head of your tibia right here, which gives us that round feeling on the inside and that and the um, um, semimembranosus tendinosus or the lateral side, the outside of our hamstring is creating a very straight line because it's going straight to the head of our fibula, which is roughly 
uh, parallel to our kneeling bone, okay? So our kneeling bones are right here, okay? So you can see roughly right around there is going to be the head of the fibula. So when, whenever you're kneeling down to pray or you're kneeling down to clean something or to pick something up off the floor, this is what you're actually, uh, your shins, uh, this is a part of your shin that's resting on the floor, okay? So, um, what am I doing? Over here, but ba doing okay? So, uh, right around there is where we're gonna have that. Um, your, let's bring this down a bit more so it's a little bit more angular and it's not so um, aggressive uh, coming straight out of the gate, okay? Um, so now the front of your leg here, this is going to be the peak of it and this profile. Okay, so we're gonna send this back. Uh, and your kneecap is not your entire knee. It is right here, right there. And then the ligament that goes down to your kneeling bone, which is roughly gonna be near your head of your fibula. And so now you know that your uh, calf can't go in front of the fibula and your calf can't go on uh, in front of this um, bony landmark uh, or the inside of your shin here. It, it attaches to the inside of your shin, but it doesn't go over it, right? So in the future, I don't want to see anybody sculpting calves like this, okay? It needs to have a foreground and a background element, okay? Um, so yeah, those are the major points. There's still uh, lots of uh, stuff to fix. But uh, we got to keep going because I don't have much time. Yeah. Alrighty. So uh, this one is an alien um, that is from uh, Jin, right? Is that how you say it? Jin? Alrighty. So uh, some things you can do. Um, you do have the wider hips to... Uh, to rib ratio, right? So that's automatically giving us a sense of uh, femininity, okay? Um, I would say um, you can probably, uh, maybe a little bit more, a few more hits here around the hip area. And you can see it's, um, it's very, squarish so maybe bring that there bring that here bring that in right there uh, have a straight line for the for the uh, bottom back uh, let me get rid of these arms for right now um, boom. okay so you can see how it feels like it's leaning back all right lean back lean back so possibly fixing the posture a bit. Um, so I'm just going off of the anatomy that you're suggesting here, which would be the lats, right? So this after the rib cage, uh, you don't want to have it too puffy, right? Um, and so these obliques, um, I would have a little bit more towards the back as it comes around and attaches to our anterior superior iliac spine. Uh, you can add the tensor fascia latte. You can add a bit of a hip dip in here. Uh, the abdomen, uh, instead of having it so flat, uh, possibly having a little bit more of the rib cage here. So ST, so a little bit more of the rib cage and then the oblique. And then that's going to give you a nice column to work with on your abdomen, right? And then generally on each side of the groin, there's really not a lot going on. Uh, there just needs to be space there for legs to come together and, um, and cross and do all this stuff. So we don't want a lot of uh, structure on each side of the groin. Uh, so we can allow that. Uh, just a few hints at some other types of anatomy. Um, 
Uh, I mean, if it's a crustaceous type character, then, you know, you can go that route and you really don't need to pay attention to anatomy. You just need to make it look cool, right? Or use, um, uh, use, uh, you know, real insects and in bringing that into your sculpture. Um, Alrighty. Uh, your shoulder um, right here just give it a little flat bit and that way we have you can see how this is just sloping down and just going into around uh, some soft language here so what I would like to see is a little bit more of a, of a lift boom right gives it a little bit more interesting of a profile as a const instead of a constant oblique angle it uh, kind of pops right before it ends right so just a uh, little style choices like that would definitely help this um and um let me show you how to do the clavicle right so uh we're just going to even this out for right now right here okay um and so your neck is i don't want to change this into a human but i just want to suggest some things here and there okay so this is a width, so roughly right about there. So this is gonna be straight right here, coming from the heads of the clavicle, going straight. And then after the neck, now we're gonna curve this back into the acromion process, right? From the front, it should look straight, okay? All right, so boom, uh, after the neck, and then going around like that, okay? And so that's how you structure the clavicle, okay? But you can see just adding a little, like, I would say overall, you're just missing bony landmarks. It's just not, um, uh, you just, you just have curves that just go and continue and keep going and going and going. And so I would say, boom, stop it, pop it, drop it, lock it, smack it up, flip it down. Oh, okay. Uh, just add some more of that in there uh, for your sculpts. Okay. Um, ba -ba 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 -ba. Oh, yeah, let's keep going. Let's keep going. Okay, so uh, how do you make nipples to the chest? Um, I think there's a nipple alpha you can get if you're really, if you're really, really, really interested in nipples. I would just look for a nipple alpha. Put that on there. All right. Um, let me get to this chat because I know I haven't uh, caught up with y'all in a while. Um, polished by features. Uh, yeah, that uh, cleans up poly groups and creased edges. Um, so if you got like wobbly edge and you want it a little bit smoother, that's what you would use. Uh, maybe the roughness is desire. Thanks so much, Spicer, for the critique. My pleasure, Derek. Um, later, IR. Appreciate you being here, brother, and hanging out and talking to everybody. You're the man. Um, I was wondering why those shoulders had me bothered. Yep. So that's uh, you just need bony landmarks, right? You need connection points from beginning to end. You can't just have it roll and continue going and continue going, right? Uh, you need uh, stops, planes, and then continue on. Okay. Um, all right, so, uh, we're doing good. We're doing good. Um, let's see. Um, what else can we do with this? Um, I mean, I can only, I would bring this down a bit more. You can see how high it is and that there's a whole lot on the underside. Generally, that's not what's happening. Generally is a little bit less on the other side. Um, if you want a rib cage, like uh, there's just so many things that we can do with this. If it is, you know, humanoid based or not, but we definitely want this rib cage to have a sense that it's going back into the clavicles, right? Because our rib cage, that's what it's doing, right? It's going, it goes out and then it comes back in, right? Towards the, uh, towards the Adam's apple, I guess, if you want to approximate it, okay? So we kind of need that structure here. Uh, and you can feel it's still kind of flat. And I would much rather have this 
conforming to the rib cage that's underneath. Okay. All right. And cool. Yep. All righty. So the rear delt. Uh, what we need is we need a uh, spine of the scapula, blade of the scapula, because if you have arms, you probably need something like this, right? You need some type of scapular um, uh, mechanism here. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to flatten it out because you can see how um, uh, convex it is. So I'm going to flatten this out, flatten it out, flatten it out, flatten it out, flatten it out. And you're like, well, what about the shoulder? Don't worry about the shoulder. Get the scapula right. And now what we can do is we can add the rear delt back in. But now look what we have. We have a nice contrast of organic and hard surface, which is kind of what, um, what we want to do when we're describing uh, anatomy is have a nice, um, uh, nice mix of hard surface and organic surfaces. All right. Um, alrighty. So just bringing this down, getting a little bit more of an egg for the, uh, tricep here. Um, a little bit more of the long head and then attaching it to the medial epicondyle. Uh, getting a little bit uh, thinner with this because we don't want our arms being too big if you really want it to be feminine, right? Um, you want it to be a little bit more uh, subtle and um, generally um, the skeletal structure doesn't allow for a lot of mass on females compared to males unless you have uh, performance enhancing drugs of some sort or you're a genetic freak of some sort, but uh, generally um, we want the most mass on male characters. Um, here, boom, boom, a little bit flatter, right there, that, alrighty. So, uh, you know, I can kind of fidget with this saying over and over and over again, but uh, yeah, I would add um, some more bony landmarks and um and i think it would uh add a whole lot more visual interest to this um let's see as always the spice are graciously giving back to the community thanks and say my pleasure extruder ashref what's going on uh zinchui the rest of the arms are in a different subtle okay no worries uh, since I how do I download the alphas from the Pixelogic website? I can't find the download button there. Yeah, uh, just right click save as. Thanks, Ashra. Um, so let's turn this on. Okay. Mm -hmm. But yeah, you can see if you start adding, you know, this, uh, these subtle adjustments in here, it's going to provide a whole lot more visual interest to your uh to your sculpt okay so let's see boom right here um yeah uh, i'm not much of a creature person i'm just pretty much going to bring it back into uh kind of like a, a humanoid type feeling so uh i'm just adjusting these kind of keeping that in mind um but yeah if he's gonna have a jaw then you definitely want an angle of the jaw right it just depends you know what what type of facial features are you gonna have in here and how can you bring that um uh to uh some recognizable anatomy because the thing that you want to be very careful about is introducing anatomy that n no one's ever seen before because it's gonna look wrong right no one's ever seen it before so you want to be careful that you're pulling your anatomy from some type of animal humanoid or uh or reptile or bug or something that is actually within our 
uh, Animal Kingdom so that people aren't like, what the hell is that? I don't know what, what is, I, I, I don't know what, you know, you don't want to confuse people when you're trying to communicate with them, right? So uh, just be careful, be careful uh, with making up brand new shapes that no one's ever seen before, okay? Uh, but yeah, yep, 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 yep. Alrighty. Um, so, if you did learn anything, make sure to go and like the video, you people. Look at this. Seven dislikes. Why would you dislike this video? Why would you dislike this video? What did I? I didn't say anything. I didn't say anything. <sighs> Jesus. People are so mean. So mean. So give me some more likes, people. Come on, 58. There's like 120 of y'all watching this thing. All right. Okay. And you saw that earlier, Daisuke. This guy told me, F you, you're a loser. Does that ever happen to you, Daisuke? Because I literally have someone coming into my chat every single time being rude to me. I have no idea why. No clue whatsoever. And I never see it on anyone else's streams, but I am going to start blocking y'all because I don't need that type of negativity in here at all. So, um, yeah, we're gonna start taking care of that in the future, because there's no reason that y'all should be rewarded to communicate with me if you're gonna be using that type of language. So, um, yeah, please go here, please like the video, try to give me a better ratio than this. Um, but yeah, if you did learn anything, uh, go to XMD Academy, uh, check us out there. Um, uh, you got the mentorship with a payment plan and the on demand with a payment plan. If you get the on demand, uh, the difference is subtracted from the overall total of this. So you can, um, uh, so you're not paying twice, right? Um, if you want something a little bit more affordable, uh, I do have my, um, art station store here and um we have uh, i would suggest getting the bundle because everything new that i'm going to add to this is automatically going to be in here so some things might happen in the future where i'm going to bring um some more uh some more parts of my uh course in here to kind of give you a little flavor test so you can uh use it in the future for um to hopefully take the course in total so definitely, uh, if you got the money, get that. If not, uh, we have all these, uh, and they're all five star. Um, and then last but not least, pick yourself up a ZB Ho Dojo shirt. Keep the dojo doors open. I literally make like a dollar off of these things. So um, they're just there for y'all to wear. They're not there for me to make a lot of money on, right? So uh, consider uh, supporting the channel supporting myself uh, in all those ways. Hopefully um, providing enough value for y'all um, to be incentivized to do so, okay? So before we go, let us enter the sanctum of that, which is Scott E. Aiton. Thank you very much for being on the stream. I appreciate all of you for being here. I'm here every Tuesday, kicking ass, taking names, turning on autosave, and increasing your knowledge of anatomy, taking you to that next level, all given to you by the people at Pixelogic at ZBrush Live. Make sure to like, make sure to subscribe, make sure to support the other streamers here. Um, and uh, if you have any questions or anything like that, definitely put them down below in the comments. I do uh, come back to these videos and uh, just see if anyone's got any questions or anything like that or any uh, suggestions or something like that that could improve the stream. So uh, definitely feel free to do that. Um, otherwise, we have 122 billion people watching the stream right now, but we are all one, 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 one.
one, 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 one,